Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and Let's Try Life in Bunker. It's developed by Flock Studios. You can pick it up for $15.99 on Steam. It's available for Windows, Steam Play, and Mac. It supports Steam achievements and Steam stats. I will be playing a free press copy that was provided to me in order to make this video. So I'm going to go ahead and actually start a new game. Later on, we'll pick up on a bunker that I've got uh, maybe about two hours into the game. Uh, you can name your bunker. We're going to name it uh, T-Bunk. You can make world or uh, small or large for world size. We're going to go with large because that's what I picked last time. Uh, you can set how much ore you want in the game, low, normal, or high. Uh, caverns, low number, normal, or high. I'm not sure what caverns means in this case. I guess, hmm, I don't know, I haven't found any real caverns, I don't know what it means by that exactly. Uh, events, rarely, normal, or frequently, uh, I think that means like uh, outbreak of sickness, things like that. Uh, Molemen, no, you can turn it off completely, low, normal, or high, again, we're going to leave all of the rest of this default. Uh, hide rifts and mines, this will make more sense when we hop in, we're going to turn off the tutorial, because uh, I will be tutorial, and I've already played through the tutorial. So let's go ahead and actually pause it so we can go over a few things. Now this is a bunker simulation, bunker building simulation, I should say. Uh, basically a city builder, except you're building a bunker after a post-apocalyptic terrible thing, etc, etc. So let's go ahead and get started building, just so you can kind of see how the basic gameplay works, and then we'll go over the individual aspects of the game. So first things first, there's an ore deposit here. I click on it, tells me how much ore it has. Uh, ore is very important for you to build things. The first thing we're going to do is say, okay, we're gonna destroy this wall. You click the destroy button. We're gonna click over here and they will clear all this out. We'll right click to get rid of that and say, okay. Now we gotta first also check who is doing what? Right now, no one's assigned to any jobs. And again, I'll go over this in a little bit more detail in a little bit. But for the time being, let's go ahead and assign... Let's go ahead and set everybody to be a worker. Just, just to start with. And we'll go ahead and hit play so they can go ahead and get started here. We have our... Uh, again, I'll go over a lot of these machines, but these are your... Basically, if you didn't start with these, you would be uh, completely uh, boned. Oh, wow, there's a lot of minerals uh, up here so far. Very good, my first bunker had only like two, maybe three. Uh, we're also going to start clearing out this way. As you can see, we can't see very far past uh, kind of this uh, darkness here. So let's go ahead and try to get them to make way here. And you notice how it says cannot build, cannot build, or cannot destroy. Some rocks, are too hard for you to destroy starting off. However, you can research later on and uh, and be able to do that. We can move the camera around. I'm using the middle mouse. But you can also use the keyboard keys. I'm using WASD to move around. You can zoom in and out. All the standard city sim manager type things. So we're gonna go ahead and start extracting these ore, or extracting this ore. So we have three main menus. This is just your point select cursor. Uh, this is some very basic stuff, walls, floors, uh, and electrical and water lines. And we want to, these are your main things. Uh, small earthquakes, we, those are pretty inconsequential. Don't worry about the earthquakes. All they really do is create a little bit of a mess. And your janitors have to, to clean it up before you can build there. So let's go ahead and go production and mining machine. We're going to place it there. Blue means that... Basically, it's the blueprint. Uh, we need somebody to build it. One of our workers will do that. And one of the reasons I started with so many workers uh, is so that they could get this going uh, as soon as possible. I want to get our uh, our mining going ASAP here because we want uh, we want to start building this because as I found out last time, running out of building building materials uh, is a real bummer. So while they are doing that. Let's go ahead and start looking at some of the UI because I feel like some of this might be a little confusing uh, if I start digging into it as we, you know, uh, as we go. So anyway, so looking at the UI here, we are on level one. This one interesting thing about this game is it's multi-layer. So you can actually go down to additional levels eventually and uh, fill those out as well. Uh, and as you go deeper and deeper, it's harder to, I, I think there's additional challenges. The only one I'm aware of 
is that air is harder to to uh, to purify so you need more air purifiers which also means more electricity and more water uh we also I'm gonna actually pause the game too just so it doesn't go too far and again later on i will load a save file where i'm already uh fairly far into the game so that you can see what that looks like so anyway here is your stats this shows all your people you can rename them if you would like which we won't do right now you can also click this to go to them and I'll go over their stats briefly here in a little bit. Uh, but to go back into here, you can see how long, how, basically their age, how long they've been in the bunker. Because your, your people do age. They go, well, you start off with basically middle-aged people, as you can see here from just twos. But later on, you can create babies, and eventually they do get old, and they do die of old age. So you'll want to keep this in mind later on. This is their overall health, which I don't know why that guy's hurt. Maybe he got hurt by the landslide. And this all is the jobs that they can do, and the red square indicates the job that they're assigned to currently. Uh, this, you can control which level they work on. So let's say we have a, a janitor, but we only work, want him to work on levels one and two. We can uncheck levels three and four. Again, early on, this isn't gonna matter because they can't even get to level two. So don't worry about that. But later on, when you get multi-levels, uh, it actually does become important. Shows your overall happiness of that person, and uh, if they have any kind of diseases, uh, or afflictions and how bad they are. Events is just kind of an event log. Tells you things when things are constructed, uh, if, if there's like an out sickness outbreak or if somebody gets a broken arm, something like that. Research, you can gain research points and gain new things. For example, you can teach your workers to drill faster or drill into material they couldn't do before. Make doctor visits go faster, grow crops faster, uh, be able to uh, place down different uh, buildings, things like that. Utilities, you generate three things that are essential for life. Oxygen, electricity, and water. This shows you how much you're you're generating on the left, and then how much you're consuming on the right. 38% shows you how much you have left. So you have 38% of our air reserves left. So we can keep pumping out more people if we would like. Uh, same for the power, same for the water. And the tutorial, that's just kind of all the tutorial stuff. If you forget something specific, you can go back and read that. Along the top here is our resources. We have, that's how many people we have, how many science points or research points, how much total garbage we have and how much capacity we have. Building materials, very important. Everything you build or almost everything you build requires building materials. Uh, ore, which is the, again, the raw materials that you're pulling out from the earth. And then we have our foods here, fruits, vegetables, wheat, or I'm sorry, grains and fish. Any kind of like alert messages pop up over here. We've already kind of went over this. This is the like, the, it's kind of strange that these are split up even at all, but these are your uh, fundamental structures as they call it. And this is pretty much everything else. And then that is how to destroy. So let's go ahead and let's assign people because that's one of the first things you're going to want to do. Uh, we don't need this many workers. Uh, but we want to assign people smartly here. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to make this person a scientist. A scientist works at both the med bay. They also work at a research desk to give you the research points that you need. Uh, we need a cook. So we'll go ahead and have you be the cook. And we'll have you as an engineer. Now, these really don't matter yet because we don't have the appropriate stations built for them to work at. But just to have them assigned, we'll do that. Uh, everybody else is assigned as a worker anyway. Actually, let's go ahead and make it one janitor. So we have at least one person cleaning up trash, because that is important. They do, they, the, the, uh, the janitor does not need a specific station. So uh, also, too, here, you can see how long you've been going. You can also change the speeds, uh, three different speeds as well as pause. Uh, this is also your current oxygen level. You do not want that to drop to uh, low or zero because that uh, needless to say is bad so let's get our workers well working i don't want them sitting uh, sitting around idly we'll go ahead and make another mining machine and get that going now let's go back up here to our first mining machine right now it's not doing anything and you can tell that because it's got a red dot on it which means if it has a red flashing dot, that means it needs electricity, but it's not actually getting electricity. So let's switch over. You have three different views. You have the regular view, then you have the water view, where you can see you know, how your plumbing is set up, what's being uh, supplied with water, and then you have the same thing with electricity. You can see the electricity lines, uh, and the green indicate that there's a solid connection. So we need to get electricity over here. 
Most things that will conduct electricity also pass electricity through it. So, which is a good thing, because for example, if we had another object over here that needed electricity, we could just put it on this side and just run power through it. Very, very convenient. Uh, it makes, makes laying power lines very simple. So let's go ahead and let's run some power. Wait, but, oh. So you can't build into the dirt here. You do have to be a little bit picky where you where you build. It's fairly forgiving though, to be uh, to be fair. Wait, can I really build there? I don't know if it'll let me actually build all the way under there. We'll see what they do. Again, our workers will build that just to get this operation going here. So with that done. Let's start looking at the rest of getting uh, our essential stuff built. We're not going to build a bother powering these up just yet, mostly because we're not playing for real. Uh, I'm just showing you how to kind of get your base started up uh, and going. Let's start making some rooms, because as you know, with these types of games, it's usually not as simple as get power, get electricity, get food, and that's it. There's a lot more to it. We got to meet various needs that our people have. So let's help them get cleared out. In fact, we're gonna speed it up a bit so they hurry up. They not get that wired up. They did not. Did they give up? Oh, wait, did I lay water cable? I sure did. Yep, that's why that didn't work. Good job. Let's go ahead and actually just replace it with power. And we'll pretend that never even happened. Power cable. Yep, let's never discuss that again. I was wondering why it didn't connect. I was like, that's strange, it normally does that. But, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and take it back down to normal speed. Now, to build most kinds of objects, you need a flooring of some kind. And, and also notice, a lot of times when you're building or destroying, you get like a uh, okay or cancel. Keep in mind, I've kind of forgotten that sometimes it went to do other things, or escaped out and then wondered why it wasn't being built. Uh, that just, that message just means I'm getting things going on. So this is getting light burns while playing with a hot soldering iron. So that person is going to be hurting for a little while. And this is also the mole people that pop up. Anybody can attack the mole people. They're pretty weak. Nobody's probably going to die to a mole person unless they get attacked by more than one at a time. And our janitor is vacuum up, vacuuming up the remains, showing all due respect. But, uh, but yeah, the mole people are uh, pretty much a non-issue. I, if you want a challenge from them, I would definitely suggest cranking up how many spawn, but they're pretty negligible. You don't get anything from killing them either, so they kind of, you can pretty much almost entirely ignore them. They come up through holes in the ground, the janitors have to, like, suck up or, or seal the holes. Why the janitors seal the holes, who knows? Let's not ask. So, going back to what I was saying before, if you want to build an object, you have to lay down a tile of some kind. So we're going to go to the, under fundamental structures. We're going to go to floors. And let's start with some beds because honestly, you know, people probably, even though we live in a post-apocalyptic world, they probably still want to sleep. So we're going to lay out a decent size area here. And again, this is probably not what I would normally do uh, if I was building this to, to make a permanent base. But again, I want to get some of these basics down so you understand the process. So I've laid the tiles down and they're blue. So now our workers have to lay them down. Again, keeping in mind, anything we build takes up building materials. And then we're going to switch over. You can also switch between these with your one, two, three, four keys, which is nice. I like to switch quickly between them. Uh, often, even though this is where you spend most of your time. So let's go ahead and get some beds. I think it's under residential. Yes. And you can see there's some items with a lock. That means you haven't researched those items yet. So we can only make single beds, not bunk beds, which is totally okay. Let's go ahead and we have how many people? We have 10. You don't need a bed for every single person because not everybody sleeps at the same time. So maybe about half. One bed for, you know, if, so if you got 10 people, maybe five beds is fine. I'm going to build six because I'm such a nice guy and I want my people to happy, be happy. Now, notice when you lay objects, you do not have to confirm. It just lays down and you can right click to rotate objects. So speaking of objects we need to build, we're going to clear this out. And we're going to come back over here in a second because I like to keep my workers busy. 
I don't want them sitting around when they could be uh, clearing out more space. So you guys go do that while we talk about some of the other stuff that you can build. Uh, and this goes along with things that you can build. Let's click on a person. Let's check out their needs. They have one, three, six different needs. They have fatigue, fixed by sleeping. They have hunger, fixed by eating. Cleanliness, which they can fix with showers. Uh, then they have toilet, which is fixed by toilets. Uh, leisure, which you can do exercise bikes. There's other things you can do, uh, like a sofa that increases their leisure. And sport. Actually, I think sport, the exercise bike, is used for that. But there's a few other objects as well that you can use for that. So let's get the essentials done first. Uh, we definitely want to get our uh, food stuff done. Let's go ahead and just pile this out. One thing I do wish is that with a lot of other games like this, typically you draw like a full square. So for example, if I was drawing tiling, and I'm gonna go ahead and say okay so they can start building this as soon as possible. But one thing that with a lot of games like this, if you're a big fan of games uh, of this nature, typically you would click here and then maybe draw it out and it would make a filled in square. Here you kind of had to draw every single line. It's not a big deal, but it can be a little, little bit tedious when you're trying to, to do it in a hurry. Still haven't destroyed that yet, but that's fine for the time being. Uh, let's see. And while they are doing that, actually, let's wait so I'm not going all over the place. I'm trying to explain all the uh, various aspects of this game without talking a mile a minute. Sorry if it's if it's a little bit too too much. But again, I want to show you the basics of of what you need to get things going, and before we hop over to the, the more a little bit more advanced stuff. So let's go ahead and believe under residential zone yes so let's go ahead and make two shower pods actually those are too wide so let's put the shower pods over here and we will make the toilet cabins over here since they're smaller actually it looks like the toilets don't even have to be on tiles most things do have to be on tiles uh, it looks like the bathrooms do not so, with those being built, they're going to need water. So, let's take that opportunity to look at some of the stuff that we started with that are essential. Uh, first of all, these little speely, uh, spinning whirly gigs here are your air purifiers. They produce clean oxygen. As you can see here, they produce three. Uh, and then you can click here to open up uh, so you can see your overall oxygen production. So, you definitely want those to keep working. Uh, and uh, you need to build more as you get more people. We have a big air purifier, which is basically one of these, except it does more. So this one does tens. These only do three. As soon as you can make a big one, I make big ones. It, obviously, it takes more resources, but it's it's absolutely worth it, in my opinion, just to save, save space, save time, and save... Overall, I think it saves on building resources. Now, here's an incubator, and I want to show you this right now so we can use this. Your people actually don't have sex to have babies. I mean, maybe they do, but they don't. Well, I know they have sex because I've actually had people die of STDs before, but they don't produce babies for whatever reason. So to make babies, you actually just use an incubator. Now, what's interesting here is by default, your baby can come out with random skill sets. However, if you want to, you can actually assign it. Say, okay, we desperately need a cook and a farmer. So you can say, okay, I want you to have cook skills and I want you to have farming skills. Or you can say, I want you to have all the skills. However, as you can see, it costs research. And as you <laughs> increase what they know, uh, it increases the research cost drastically. Honestly, I don't really find a good reason to... I'm going to pause it for a second. I don't find a very good reason to make them get more than one. Like if you... Honestly... Unless you desperately need something critical, like an engineer or a scientist, I don't even waste the science points. I just let it go random. I have used it a few times in emergencies. More often than not, though, just random is fine. So let's go ahead and start these, uh, these incubated babies. And over time, these will just by themselves slowly grow into children. But they do start off as children, and children will not work because, well, they're children. So that's that. We have here the water pump. Does what you would think it would do. Pumps water. It doesn't have to be connected to a water source or anything like that. It just pumps water. This blue indicator is... is, And there's a lot of little details like this that I can appreciate in this game. This indicator 
normally would go out to here, like as max, but the but right now it's kind of low because we're actually running a little bit low. So that actually corresponds to how much spare water this has. I'm not describing that right, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, and this is the mini reactor. This gives our power. Same deal here. We're at about 50% on that, so not bad at all. And of course, you can see that on the side. But it's nice when you're kind of zooming over things to check this once in a while. Just And you can quickly go, oh, we have plenty of water. Or, oh, no, we need water badly. So there's all that. Uh, entrance, I don't even know what this is for. The main entrance is sealed for 50 cycles. It'll be open when the atmosphere is suitable for living on the surface. Ah, okay. I actually never even looked at this. Um, my other game is actually pretty high up. I think about 30 cycles. I think I should be able to make 50 fairly easily. So I guess that's how you beat the game. You live for 50 cycles. Uh, this is your waste container. Holds 8 of 50. Pretty self-explanatory. These are storage containers that store either ore or building materials, and you can change what they store by clicking on here. Oops. And those are what you, that's what you start with. Oh, you also start with this, the fridge. Uh, you start with 40 fish just so that you don't starve right out of the start gate. Uh, but eventually you obviously are going to want to build on that. So let's build a little bit more because as you can see, these are all have blue blinking lights. Blue blinking lights mean that it needs water and it is not connected. Uh, and again, red means it's actually now that I look at it, it's kind of weird. Uh, the red means that it needs red blinking means it needs power, but it doesn't have it. Uh, green means it does have power connected to it. I don't know why it's not just green flashing. Who knows? Anyway, let's take a look here at our water system. Oh, and there's our, our uh, water thing conveniently placed there that I definitely didn't plan ahead of time. Also, as far as I can tell, I believe that stages are... In fact, I'm like 99% sure stages are entirely just randomly generated because this is not the same stage that I got last time. Maybe the tutorial mission is always the same. Maybe that's what it is. So we're going to have them go ahead and build the water pipes and we can we'll watch them do that here. And you'll see as they get them built, the light stop, stops flashing. Almost. We only got two more we need to make. And again, notice these are gray, and now they went to blue, indicating that they do have a solid flow going through. So now the showers and the toilets are working, but that's not enough. People need people need to be able to uh, eat. So let's make where is not storage production, not production. Let's make a kitchen. Again, this is not exactly how I would set up uh, for real, but. For convenience sake, we're going to do this. Don't build yourself super constrained like this. And while we're waiting on that to be built, let's go ahead and skip ahead a step and make a catch uh, a canteen table. You have to have a table for people to eat at uh, and for the food to be served too. So we will go ahead and do that. And do we have a cook? I think. Yes, we do have a cook. So I'm going to let this get built and then so you can see kind of the basics here happen. And then we're going to switch over to my my uh, my main game. That guy finished the building and immediately ran into the bathroom. He was doing the pee pee dance the whole time. Oh, we, we can see it's glowing red or flashing red and blue. So we are going to connect it to both water pipe. We'll do that. Say yes. Power cable. We don't have power cable running, so let's fix that. Uh, we do have power going to the water pump, so we know we can just connect it to the power pump. Say OK. And just wait for them to get it connected. Oh, he's already got the water. And then as soon as this switches over, then uh, our cook should move over. Let's talk about some things while we wait for things to play out in front of us and before we switch over. One thing I would like to see in this game is more variation in what people are wearing to try to determine what they do. Um, I think there is some some consistency. Uh, so for example, this person's a worker. I think everybody who wears blue is a worker. Green is scientist. The kind of white look is a cook. So I guess there is. It does seem like there was variation. Something. Oh, and brown is janitor. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So there is some color indication, uh, so you can very, again, quickly at a glance, see 
who's what. Like, you're an engineer, you're a cook, etc. You cannot order people to do specific things. So, for example, if you've got three things being built over here, and you're like, oh, this is the most important, I want this to get built first, there isn't a way to say, hey, you know, give this a higher build priority. Typically, they still build fairly quickly, so it's a non-issue. But there has been times where I really wanted to say, hey, you guys need to do this right now, and they just didn't. Uh, and lastly, the th last thing I'll show before you switch over is the refinery. Now, we're getting raw ore. Oh, uh, yes, I know they're starving. They'll, they'll be fixed soon. Relax. The next thing I want to do is make the refinery. You're getting the raw ore, but that doesn't do you any good. You need something to turn it into building materials. And building materials is the only thing that you can turn the ore into. It's not like there's multiple paths you need to, to balance here. There's only one thing. You'll notice it's not letting me build it. That's because, if you look at the bottom right here, it shows building materials, which we have. This is, we only need, we need 100. We need 30 kilowatts of power, and we also need a concrete floor. So we can't use a regular floor here, we need a concrete floor. This is an interesting design choice. I honestly don't, couldn't honestly tell you what the point of the floors are. I mean, it's, they don't take very much building material, and they're built fairly quickly. I'm waiting for them to kill this mole man. You guys wanna kill this guy? No? I guess just live in peace. I guess. But it doesn't it doesn't really add much to the game. The tiles don't. It's not like there's a lot of choice you have to make. It's like, oh, uh, I've gotta build these tiles. It's like, oh, I forgot I build these tiles. And then as you see, two minutes later, we have our tiles. So there's not I I like I say I don't really get the the points. Um most heavier structures need the concrete tiles, and then farms need metal tiles for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and... Uh, oops, not that. We've already got that. Switch the refinery. Now, these things are autonomous. It automatically mines for you. You do not need to have somebody working on it. Same goes for the refinery. You also don't need the refinery right on top of it. I just built it there because it kind of makes logical sense. As far as I can tell, as soon as you mine ore, it just automatically goes into your storage. Nobody needs to carry it there or anything like that. Uh, and then your refinery automatically takes it from your global storage and processes it. That's important when you start to move to different layers because you don't have to worry about transporting it from one level to the next. So if I go and place some mining equipment, on the second level, I don't have to worry about, oh, I've got to have somebody carry it up to the second level. At least as far as I've seen, that's completely unnecessary. Because it doesn't show any kind of specific storage. You can see how many ores left in this vein, but again, I don't think I've ever seen anybody carrying ore from, from one place to another. That might be a negative for some folks who feel it's a little bit too dumbed down. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. You can make your own decision as far as if you think that's a good thing or not. Everybody sleeps in their clothes because it's a video game, and we all know in video games, everybody always sleeps with their clothes on. So that's the basics of getting your base set up. Again, I would probably not set it up like this uh, if you were doing this. Uh, and I like the large map better, actually, because it gives you more ore. And ore is going to be your ultimate li limiting factor in this game because use that for building materials and there's as far as i can tell no other way to get building materials you can build a recycling like a recycling bin which recycles your garbage but i don't think it recycles it into anything it's i i don't believe so it doesn't indicate that it recycles it into something where is it uh blah, blah, blah. very slowly recycles garbage from waste containers now what i would actually like if the garbage recycler turns your garbage into building material Maybe at a much, you know, obviously at a much slower pace than the refinery. Like, much, much slower. But I do think it should, because once you've run out of war, basically the stage is over. That might not be necessarily a bad thing, or that might be going against what the developers wanted. Because it seems like they kind of wanted you to just to live a uh, time, like a time cycle. And then your, you know, game's over. But a lot of times, you know, people like you and I, possibly... Uh, play this game endlessly like we just go and go and go until we're like okay i feel like i've i've beat it we don't beat it to all right we've beat this objective let's stop playing and move on to the next map right you understand what i'm saying again if you've played this game like type of game a lot so 
That's the basics there. I'll go ahead and, for some reason, I will go ahead and just say a new save. And you can uh, name those whatever you... Oh, I think try 2 is actually the name of my other bunker. Uh, because my first one went went very badly. Because I didn't, wasn't placing things very well. So let's go ahead and load that. Now, first word of warning. And let me pause this. First major word of warning. If you play this game and you go through the tutorial, which I suggest... One thing that they don't really prepare you for is all of your your uh, your vault people start at the same age. This becomes a problem when retirement comes because I was doing great and then all of a sudden like half of my staff all retired at the same time. And because it was my first time and I was still going to do you know still kind of learning the ropes, I wasn't continuing to produce babies. So long story short, I almost lost at that point because I had very few people. I had a bunch of old people sucking up oxygen uh, and then I started making babies. But, you know, again, for like one or two cycles, like probably like two cycles or so, the children are useless. They just eat and take your oxygen, but they don't actually work. And that almost screwed me, but I was able to pull it out. Uh, and you can actually see I'm doing fairly well here. I've actually got my lit my rip population drop a bit just to give myself a break because I ran really low on resources because uh, I think I was up to like 30 something people at one point uh, and one thing I'm curious of is maybe you get a higher score for more people like if you have like a whole bunch of people by the time that the doors open you get like a bonus score I'm not sure that would actually be a pretty interesting way to do this anyway let's show you some of what's going on here I'll go ahead and just back to place so you can see them them doing their stuff as you can see, I have mined out this entire, and this is a small map, by the way. Again, this is why I strongly suggest that you use the large maps gen uh, generally, uh, and also just for more resources. Anyway, you'll notice I don't have any walls. You can build walls if you want. Uh-oh. Looks like, oh, Anton died of at the ripe old age of 16. That's 16 cycles, by the way. I think a cycle is supposed to be about like 10 years or something like that. But um, anyway, so yes, I've mined everything out. You don't get any resources, by the way, just from mining walls and stuff. Even though some stuff looks like it might have minerals or something like that in it, that's not the case. But anyway, I've just mined it all out. Now you can make walls if you want to. However, personally, I, while it makes your, your compound look better, I find it actually makes it a little bit less efficient. Because with this way, people can just move however they want, right? They're not obstructed by walls or anything like that. They can just go wherever. So if you don't care about how your base looks, you can go just fine without using any walls. But let's look at some of the newer equipment that I have here that you guys didn't see before. Uh, we have this infirm uh, infirmary. This is where people get checkups and this is where people get cured. A research station. This is where your scientists will work and generate research points. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, old person, no. They were a little bit old. How did you guys let this? I think there's actually two there. Yeah, there's two. Come on, live. And again, you can't, as far as I can tell. Oh, come on. Ah, nice. Two for one. You should have leveled up. Actually, I don't think they have levels. But yeah, shame that these people weren't actually bothering to help them. Uh, they're kind of stupid in that regard. A lot of times they will help, but these guys are just like, nah, I'm too busy reading this book. But anyway, yeah, you generate research points here. As you can see, they research them pretty darn quickly, which is awesome. Uh, see, there's just a refinery. This is a lift. You have to build the lift in order to go down to further levels. Here's the farms. We have four different farms. We have the vegetable patch, the grain patch, the fish aquarium, and the fruit bush. Now, the question is, why do you bother building different things? Because the chefs make food out of however many materials if you have. So if you've only got two, he makes food out of two. If you make, if you have all four, he makes food out of all four. The more ingredients in the food he makes, the longer people stay fed. So the less food they'll eat. So you really want to get all of these filled up, right? Because then they'll eat less food and then you can generate more or make sure you always have more than zero. So then you have to make less food. So it kind of feeds on itself. And this is the metal floor. And you'll notice here, I actually prefer in a game like this to have not like one room that's dedicated necessarily to sleeping and whatnot. Farmers in particular don't hang around their workstations very much. 
They don't have to. They don't have to stay there all the time. Let me see if I can show you an example. Nope, I don't have an example. Like right here, you do need the farmer to do the cultivation. <clears throat> Excuse me. After a while though, like after they do that part, it grows on its own up until like 90% or something. But then you need a farmer again to finish. So you'll see here, this this farm had got to like 40%. It needed a farmer to, a farmer to do whatever it is the farmer does. And now he's got it up to 63. Now he can leave and do other stuff. The problem I found is they often wander really far away and they waste a lot of time coming back. So with farms in particular, I would definitely suggest having beds close by. Now, anybody can sleep in these beds. You can't assign them. But your hope is that they're spending, since they're spending time over here anyway, there's a high chance that they'll use this. Uh, you'll also want every other thing that you can to be close to farmers, in my opinion. Like exercise bikes and other things of that nature. Sofas. Anything to keep them from going too far away from the, the base station uh, so that they can get back and do their thing. So you see, had they had to run back from pretty far away. Uh, and as they get older, they won't run. They'll just walk. So you don't want that. You want them to keep that food production up. That's true for other things as well, to some extent. Like, for example, engineers have to walk around and do maintenance on all the machines. They also have to fix them if something breaks. But farmers in particular, like I say, have a tendency to really wander far away. Uh, and that can be a real pain in the butt. You can also see we have a ton of research points. If we go in here, you can see I've actually got almost everything as we go through. It's pretty easy, actually, because I actually considered making a second research desk, but honestly, it was, like I say, fairly easy to use our research points to get almost everything. Uh, what did I want to get? Let's make a VR game machine for 30 research and a treadmill, sure. And we'll go ahead and build those things while we wait. I think it's under resting zone. I want to see what this VR game machine is. Because, of course, we want to see what the VR game machine is. We'll put that here. And we will put the treadmill here. I also have a dance machine that I built earlier. We'll put this right behind that scientist trying to work getting me even more research points. The only thing, other thing you can use research points on is as I talked about before, the incubator. And I would strongly advise two incubators, by the way. Uh, but you can use those, as I mentioned before, to get a baby or a child or a person, whatever, who's good at very specific skills. But like now, I absolutely don't need that. Because if you look, I've got, see, you only really ever need like two scientists, most, at most, maybe three. As, you, as your base builds up, obviously I'm talking mostly at one level. And more than that, yes, you'll wanna, want to increase, but of course your population should naturally be increasing as well. So basically two sciences per floor is what I'm trying to get at. Um, anyway, so janitors, maybe two per floor. Even that's probably pushing it. Uh, engineers, I like to have two per floor just to make sure that everything is kept up because if your, elect if your electrical generator breaks, it can be a big, big problem because it kind of a domino effect of other things breaking. You want at least one cook, which we have zero of right now. So let's fix that really soon. Uh, let's do that. We took off one farmer. Uh, farmers, the thing, here's the thing with farmers that I talked about before briefly. One farmer can work multiple sections. You don't have one farmer dedicated to a single thing, but because they tend to go move so far away, I like having like one per. And even then, like I said, there's sometimes where it's just sitting there waiting for a farmer and one doesn't come. So that's why I said, you know, generally you probably should be building things close to your, your farm. But anyway, like I said, the, you know, we've got a ton of different people doing different things. It's not really a big deal. And I think we might have children. Yeah. Children who are probably fairly close to, to getting old enough to, uh, to get old. So now you can see, uh, Daria Coelho has reached the Hori age. So this person will not work anymore. As you can see, they don't even have an occupation tab and they will now just take up food and beds and all that other stuff, which is great because, you know, we respect our senior citizens totally. I wish you could feed them into the recycler, but unfortunately that's a no-go. That's the recycler, by the way. Uh, the only other really objects that I can think of to build that I haven't really showed off 
is the fridges. I've showed you that a little bit, but again, you need one fridge for each type of food, which is a, honestly a little bit annoying. I don't see why you can't just use one fridge and store multiple types of food, but eh, whatever, it is what it is. So let's check my second level real fast. I've only really built down to the second level, and this is bare bones because as I mentioned before, I ran out of resources, so that kind of sucked. So the only thing I had chance I had was to drill down to this level to get uh, to get this or to, to get minerals here, which I've already started. I have only there's only three here. So this was actually already drilled out. So I'm going to say the symbol or disassemble and our workers will come down here. Last thing I want to show you as we wrap up here is how to drill down to the next level. So we ha every level has a rift up until the bottom one, of course. And by default, you can see it. So even if typically I could only see, like when I very first came down here, everything past here is black. By default, you can see the mineral nodes and you can see the rift. That way you know where to build. If you want it to be a little bit more realistic, a little bit more difficult, you can turn that off when the map is generated. But uh, anyway, so here's the rift. What we have to do is go to our buildings here. Maybe we got to build a lift. Uh, let's see, we'll put the entrance there. Does this need power? I actually don't remember. I don't think it does. Obviously, it probably should have that power, but whatever. The also, the reason you want to disassemble stuff is because you get some of your materials back. You do not get them all back, I'm fairly sure. But uh, yeah, as we as we wait for this to, to wrap up, I'll give you my overall thoughts. I really love games like this, and being a big Fallout fan, I really like the idea of building out your bunker and you know setting up everything and and being limited in what you can do because well you're living underground in a bunker and this game's been pretty fun i like i played it maybe two and a half to three hours before i started recording this session and i've enjoyed it however i think a lot of folks who have a lot of experience in games like this are going to find it's a little bit shallow and a little bit easy because like i said on my very first game I redid it just because I played on this tutorial. I, I well, actually, no, I take that back. The first game, I had to restart because of, like, I don't know if it was bugged or what, but I built a bunch of beds, like, right next to each other, and I think I walled off the workers, and they couldn't move, and they couldn't destroy anything, so it was kind of, kind of, uh, kind of bad. So I ended up restarting and doing the tutorial, and then the second map, I almost died, but I was able to, to pull it out. But there's really not a whole lot to worry about. I'm kind of at the level now. I've got so much research. Research is almost worthless because I can just go in here and everything I don't have. Oh, we'll go back upstairs in a minute to see our uh, our other stuff. Fast disassembling. A lot of the stuff is not very useful. Fast disassembling reduces the time needed to disassemble objects, walls, floors, pipes, and cables. I don't disable the symbol disassemble very much anyway. And disassembling doesn't take very long. So giving a bonus is something I do rarely that doesn't take a lot of time to do in the first place, which is done by a class, by a profession that I tend to have a lot of anyway, which is the worker, not really a ton of value there. A big vacuum, a more powerful Hoover reduces the time janitors have to spend on cleaning. 10% and then 20% for 40 research. Again, I tend to have one to two janitors. One's usually enough. Uh, two would be overkill, and then on top of that, reducing the time it takes in the clean, they're going to be idle a lot. Uh, let's see, ground, let's do a good organic fertilizer, fruit growth increased by 20%. Hey, sweet, and we got an achievement. So yeah, that's everything researched. So now I have 514 research points, which honestly have no value to me at this point. Uh, I can actually just turn, shut this down. Sorry. In fact, I probably could just salvage that and then build another medical bay, even though it doesn't really look like that's necessary. At this point, I think I could probably really start growing the population. Uh, I've got a lot of resource, well, I don't have many res rare or uh, raw resources, but I've got a lot of building materials. And I'm ready to go on to the third level. Are you guys using this? I want you to use the DDR machine. That's totally not a DDR machine. I love how the vomit looks like they just threw up leaves. That's fairly amusing. 
Oh, I thought he was going to go for it, but he went to the bathroom instead. Also, the bathrooms and the showers, you can tell somebody's in there by having, there's a green light. I love that. Like, little things like that that make it easy for me to tell if somebody's using something. If they're not, I mean, obviously here I can see that she's using it. With that green light, it, oh, okay, somebody's in that bathroom. That will tell me quickly, oh, I need to build another bathroom because I've got two and they're all full. Which, honestly, again, you don't really need much of anything, a lot of this stuff. I've got one bathroom and one shower for 21 people because it's they really are not filled up much. I really should have, you know, two minimum, but you don't really need a whole lot of that. But uh, yeah, it looks like she used the DDR machine. Uh, the, the point of these more expensive things like the dance machine and the VR machine is that this will fix their like leisure twice as fast as the sofa, uh, which is actually pretty darn good. Because they usually don't sit on the sofa that long. Are you going to actually get on this thing, old man? You don't understand this newfangled machine? Alright, that's fine. That's totally fine. So let's go down to the third level real quick and take a peek. At what we've got. We have a, another rift here. Again, this is what I was talking about before. Like Even if normally you couldn't see past here, you can see the rifts and the minerals by default. But again, you can turn that off when you, uh, when you create the map. And again, the deeper you go, the more, uh, more, the more oxygen purifiers you need. So that's life in bunker. Not life in a bunker. Not life in the bunker. But life in bunker. So a few notes that I want to give here, uh, especially if developers are listening and if they've managed to listen to this whole thing. Uh, one thing I would like is often you're getting people leave adolescence and they become ready to work. You have to scroll through and try to find where they are. It's like, okay, uh, oh, this person became of age, so I can you know, assign them this. So you have to, but you have to always have to scroll through. I would like a way to sort by people who do not have jobs. So when this happens, because usually you get, a, you know, three or more people, all of a sudden all can work. It doesn't take. It's not very difficult to do. You can usually very quickly look through. But it's just one of those things that I feel like could be done a little bit better. Uh, is, again, if there was a way to, to sort this so that I could see who doesn't have a job so I can assign them. You can do this, though, which is very handy. So I can quickly go, okay, we have four, four workers. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Two scientists. Actually, we don't need two scientists anymore. We're going to make you a second cook to make up for the other one. That way, that one cook's not standing at the stove the whole time. Uh, he can take breaks and this person can take over. So you can't sort by everything else, but I would definitely like to sort by, by you know, who isn't currently working. Um, also, little things like you can't move stuff that you've put down. So for example, if I place this here, let's pause it so that somebody doesn't come over here and build it. I can't like move it. Like, I'd like to be, oh, you know, it, because it's not down yet, because it's just a blueprint, I'd like to be able to move it. Instead, if you misplace, you have to just salvage it, which it, it instantly destroys it because it doesn't actually exist yet. So it's a minor point, but it is something that annoyed me just a little bit uh, when I was building. Uh, another thing is that when you're building power lines, you can't. Oh, now that it is working. Interesting. I swear I tried this before. Oh, no, never mind. I had thought I had tried to build while I had my overlay up once, and it didn't work. But it's working now, so forget I even said anything. Uh, let me see. Well, let's check my list real quick. Uh, yeah, the only other thing is, <laughs> please, on the tutorial mission, spread out the ages of the, uh, the vault inhabitants, uh, because I can't imagine I'm the only person who almost got screwed because we're still trying to learn the ropes, and then all of a sudden half or more of our vault residents suddenly became elderly and couldn't work couldn't do anything that uh that was kind of kind of a kind of a bummer to say the least but anyway yeah it's an interesting little game like i guess say for a lot of people who are hardcore into this type of game it might be a little bit shallow and possibly a little bit too easy again i don't know if you get a score based on how many people you have by the time the cycle's up if so that could actually add a fun aspect because because right now, just to survive is super easy. Like, once you kind of get to this point that I'm at now, 
there's pretty much no chance that I'm going to, to, to wipe out. Earlier, yes, I almost did wipe out. But at this point, it's almost impossible for me to, to wipe out entirely. Uh, I can keep expanding and keep growing, but when, when I think of surviving a bunker post-apocalypse, I think struggling to survive. And, you know, we kind of passed that point, and we passed it fairly easy. If I played again and I knew what to expect, I definitely know I could do it a heck of a lot easier now that I, I know to look out for people suddenly going into retirement. Uh, so it might be a bit too easy for, for uh, folks who who are big time into it. That doesn't necessarily mean the game's not, but I mean, it's not good. It's definitely fun. I've definitely been enjoying it. But, and it's only 15 bucks. So if you're looking for a simulation style game and you really like this idea of bunkers, which I personally do, I like this idea. Again, I'm biased because I'm a hardcore Fallout fan from like the originals. So the idea of building these bunkers to me is is very, very interesting. So I would probably, so to me, this game would probably be worth $15 because it would be fun to go back and say, okay, how many people can I get that are gonna live until the doors open up? And how much can I expand? Can I fill all of the four levels with people before the, uh, the time limit? runs out uh, and in this case it sounds like the time limit running out is actually good because you get to go back out into the world uh, possibly again i haven't managed to go that far but uh, anyway regardless i think if you're into that kind of thing it'd be worth the 15 dollars oh sorry about that my cat actually pulled out the uh mic plug uh cat technical problems but uh, anyway i guess even the cat's like all right shut up about this but uh, anyway yeah if you're hardcore into this into this type of genre and want something really deep this probably like, you know, more like uh, City Skylines or Anno or something like that. This is probably not going to scratch that itch. But again, it's a $15 game. I feel like if, you know, if you're okay with a little bit more shallow experience, uh, but you want to try this different kind of a challenge, especially with the multiple levels, it's definitely worth a look. So again, this is Life in Bunker. You can pick it up for $15.99 on Steam. I will have a link to this game in the description below the video. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave comments in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more videos like this of games you may or may not have heard of, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you next time.